The estimates that we've had over the last, say, 10 to 20 years are that between 30 to 40 percent of the entire amount of food that we produce globally is lost or wasted. And that could be lost on the farm due to disease or insects, or it could be waste that is plate waste from us as consumers going into a landfill. And so what that waste and loss represents is not only the food that's going to waste, but think about all the embedded resources that went into producing that food. So there's the land footprint, there's fertilizer use, there's pesticide use, there's human labor, there's transportation, there's refrigeration. There is a lot of embedded energy that goes into food production. And when we waste it, we waste everything that went into that production. We did the Food Waste Warriors project during the 2018-2019 school year, and we did two food audits that year. We lined up buckets at the exit of our cafeteria, and as the kids left, they put all of their food waste into designated buckets, and we weighed all of those. So for one day, we had 589 pounds of waste. We can turn the cafeteria into a classroom. It's such an important place in terms of learning these lessons. After we did our food audit, the kids came up with ideas. What could they do to help reduce this amount of food waste coming out of our cafeteria? One of the key goals of the Food Waste Warrior is to measure food loss and waste within cafeterias, but then to have students go back and measure and understand the impact that food systems have on biodiversity and on the planet. One of the things that the kids realized was that 120 pounds of that were food called recoverables, the unopened food that we could eat again, we could share. Bags of carrots or oranges that had not been peeled, things like that. So we looked into getting a share table. Every single day while school's in session, you have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people that are eating school lunch. And unfortunately, the way that we are conditioned as a culture, that trash can just gets loaded up and we don't think about the implications of what we throw away. Well, Wildlife Fund chose like nine markets, they call them, or cities throughout the country to help investigate the problem of global food waste. It tells about the share table and it talks about what they can put out there, what they can't put out there. This was the beginning of our food waste focus. We've always wanted to do composting. Gwinnett Clean and Beautiful reached out. The Green and Healthy Schools program is a collaborative initiative with Gwinnett Clean and Beautiful and Gwinnett County Public Schools. What it does is provide integrated environmental education that incorporates the science, AKS learning standards, civic skills, problem solving, and green career pathways. They received funding through the Foodwell Alliance. Foodwell is mainly connected to the students here in Gwinnett County through our Compost Connectors program, and that's in partnership with the Atlanta Falcons Youth Foundation, and it's a grant-based program that aims to educate students K through 12 about composting, reducing and diverting food waste, making healthier choices, and learning how to grow their own food. The Compost Connector program kind of fell in our laps at the perfect time. Connectors. We were one of the two schools that were chosen to start this program on our campus. Foodwell Alliance came out and built our compost bin in December and we kicked it off in January. Students drive all of this. The students apply to be what we call compost connectors at their school. So at lunchtime they collect food scraps, mostly fruits and vegetables. And then the students use their math skills and calculate that. From there, the students take the food waste out to the compost bin and they learn how to maintain a compost bin. They learn how to troubleshoot, they learn about microbes, uh, they learn about carbons and what's needed in a compost system, they check temperatures. Community partners are key. UGA Extension with Kim Fritz, she comes out quite a bit and she'll just come help out with lessons, they'll help out in the garden. Just the browns, the carbons, it's going to be a little cooler. But where the fruits and vegetables are decomposing, it's going to probably would be warmer. So you'll get different temperatures. <laughs> I'm 
One of the reasons that we felt like that was so important to engage students in is that it's part of a global goal. The United Nations in 2015 had a global goal of reducing food waste by 50% by 2030. Our hope at Foodwell Alliance is for the kids to learn about composting and reducing food waste and then ultimately using those different components that they're picking up from this whole process and using that to make healthier communities in the future. Our goal would be that it empowers students to have a voice and take action and, and work to help design solutions for the many environmental problems that we're facing. And when you empower youth, they want to see change, they want to drive it. And that's one of the things that I get a lot of optimism and hope for our future, because I think the youth have a huge role to play in helping us solve these problems. The first class that we started with, we had our compost connectors go through and collect food scraps. And the rest of the kids kind of figured out what we were doing just by participating in it. The conversations that the kids were having with each other as they went through and started collecting food waste, they were teaching each other, which I love to see.